notion of a concussion is a complex pathophysiological process affecting the brain that's been induced by traumatic biochemical forces. So that's kind of a fancy definition that's agreed on by this uh, Prag consent back in 2000. That just means you hit your head and there's a coup, a contra coup, and a twisting. And it's the twisting that does it. And concussions are, um, you don't have to be unconscious. Concussions in athletes, 95% of them do not involve loss of consciousness. And you can even get a concussion without hitting your head. That can happen to football players. If they're going full tilt and they're suddenly stopped when they're tackled, that can give you a concussion. Just like in a car, you can get a whiplash injury and not hit your head, but still suffer some brain damage. And that graph also showed that most of the symptoms will resolve after about a week after, the, after a first head injury. And you can recover from one head injury, if it's not too severe, pretty much completely. But if you have more than one, it's, it's then much harder for the brain to recover, as we all know from hockey players, right? And the other thing is, if you've had one concussion, you're more likely to have a second concussion. Okay, and the problem after a head injury is sometimes you get over the symptoms, but you've still got injury, and it makes you more vulnerable. And of course, sometimes the symptoms don't go away either, and that's called post-concussion syndrome, when uh, you don't recover from all the symptoms. And in particular, you can have this persistent inflammation, and it produces um, white matter degeneration. Now, in inflammation, brain. big word, just means if you get a bruise, you've got inflammation, okay? That remains, okay? It doesn't just all go away. And you folk know that. The docs may not know. Oh, some do. <laughs> so this is just saying that the injury does remain. It's not all gone five years, 10 years, 15 years later. The latest issue of brain stated 18 years later they looked and still found biochemical changes after a single concussion. Okay. So if people say, well, it should all have cleared, you shake your head and say, uh-uh. Did you know you get a concussion? It affects your heart. Heart rate variability immediately drops down. And you can have any one or a combination of problems, like vestibular network, that's like feeling dizzy, or autonomic nervous, if you have a concussion, sometimes you'll throw up afterwards. It affects your ability to pay attention, and it affects your executive network. That means things like um, even emotions. So you know, you'll have emotional changes after a concussion too. You can ha develop a short fuse and uh, it may be worse than that. If you hit the frontal and bruise the orbital surface of the frontal lobe, if it's the husband, the wife may come in and say, I don't know him. This is not the person I, met, I knew. It can be a very severe personality change. So, you know, these things can recover, but we have to understand that some everybody has different symptoms. Everybody's different. Some people will have no personality change at all. Another person will have a devastating change. You just absolutely individual. Yes.
No, a brain hemorrhage well, is a not damage. a concussion, but it is a type of brain injury. Right? So it's it's um, it it hasn't been caused by a by a force against the brain. It's been caused by the bleeding. Right? Yeah. So, but some of the damage is very similar. <laughs> this <coughs> is after a stroke, because a head injury can be as you had a bleed. It can be a stroke. It can be a concussion. So they're all giving you a head injury, aren't they? And he was looking at helmet and what things you could do for safety. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he found. <laughs> so helmets can help, but they're not going to solve all the problems. You can still have a concussion even if you're wearing your helmet when you're a football player or a hockey player, that's pretty well known. The and main injury is called diffuse axonal injury. Axons, now let me show you an axon, okay? You have a nerve cell, it's called a parietal cell, it looks like a pyramid, doesn't it? That thing coming out the bottom is like a major highway impulse to perhaps thousands of other cells. When you hit your head, you don't just hit it nice and evenly, do you? No, no, you're driving the car and you turn your head just slightly so it twists. But what happens is long axon, that's called an axon, it twists, stretches. When that happens, the chemistry of its connection to the next cell will change. Just in a simple way, this arm coming in from over here, that's the axon. Up there. That's the next nerve cell it's called a dendrite. That's a connection. But when you twist this axon, suddenly you get a flood of a chemical. It's called glutamate for those of you who want to know the name. You get a flood of that chemical into that space. When that happens, this absorbs way too much sodium and calcium. Now you've all heard of sodium and calcium because sodium is salt and calcium is in your milk, right? Okay, a big flood of sodium and calcium into here. And a flood of potassium out. Potassium's in bananas, right? Okay, what's that do? Inside here, our mitochondria, those are the little bodies that produce energy. All the cell's energy is produced in the mitochondria. Okay? Ah. But you flood it with calcium and, and sodium, it stops. And when it stops, you don't have energy in that cell. What's going to happen to the cell when it doesn't have energy? Die. Yeah. Now it doesn't have to. It may just be injured, but it may die. Ah, but all that <coughs> potassium come out constricts the blood vessels. Hey, wait a minute. Blood vessels supply oxygen, don't they? And they supply nutrients, don't they? So suddenly when you need energy, all these things that are going to produce energy are gone. Explains the well, you're left with a pretty bad situation, aren't you? And that's why sometimes a person can be worse a few weeks after the injury than they were immediately after it because some of the cells have died due to this energy crisis. <laughs> Now, when you went into hospital, they did an MRI. They may have done a CAT scan, a PET scan, you know, 
you've heard these names, those won't show anything to do with this. And they'll look at you and say, oh, sorry, this one's normal. And you know that things aren't normal. But the PET scan's normal, the CAT scan's normal, the MRI's normal. Now, it doesn't have to be. If you had a big bruising in here, it's going to show that, yes. If you have a big bleed, it'll show that, yes, okay? But this kind of twisting and axonal injury that you get in a mild concussion, mild, there's no such thing as mild, as you put it, <laughs> uh, you don't see that. But we see it with the quantitative electroencephalogram. Okay, that's the difference. But you don't get that in the hospital. So the standard assessment, as Michael said, often the problems don't show up. And the only treatment that's really agreed upon is rest. But um, you don't always fully recover just with rest. So what do you miss if you don't look at it from all perspectives that we're talking about? Oh, Isn't he cute? But <laughs> well, what is it really? Oh. It's a bowl of fruit. So different perspectives. And also, people don't always take head injuries seriously or even realize they've had one. So this is a quote from this Formula One driver after a crash. He said, my brain was confused. I didn't record anything on my hard drive. I remember a lot of people around me. I was a bit confused what had happened. And then he says, I didn't have any injuries to my head. He'd hurt his leg in this crash, and he didn't think he had any injuries to his head. But of course, if he was feeling confused, obviously he had also uh, suffered some, some traumatic brain injury. So different ways to look at assessing after a concussion. The self-report, that's sensitive for the first 24 hours. And neural psych testing is usually sensitive for about a week, but then normalizes. And things that show up the changes beyond that week are postural assessment, so a person's balance, and also the EEG, the brainwave patterns. And if you combine things, you have a more sensitive uh, um, way of looking at things. Okay, so. This is what we now do at our center. Right, so we have a person do questionnaires, they do online neuropsych testing, we look at their EEG, and that QEEG means 19 channel, we'll show you a picture of that. Uh, there's something called Loretta that analyzes the EEG. Um, it gives you, we see something right here in the surface, we'll show you tonight. It tells you the source inside the brain, precisely in the cortex, where that is. It just like that, that fast. And ERP, that's called an evoked potential. And this is brain speed. And you can think, yeah, maybe brain speed is changed when you have a concussion. If I put my hand up like that, did you see it? Yeah. Well, in the first 100 milliseconds, you did not know it was there. But your brain brain went boom. And in 175 milliseconds, you still did not know it was there. But your brain went blip. And we can see those. At 370 milliseconds, you said, ah, five fingers. <laughs> it took that long. It took that long, but after a concussion, it won't take 375 milliseconds. Maybe it'll take 700. That's brain speed. And it's really affected with any kind of injury. And we measure that just instantly. <laughs>